started? I love that. <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you all for joining this evening. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to just fellowship one with another. It is such an exciting time for us to fellowship in this manner in this time. So anyone who want to open up in prayer? Okay, I'm on here. Yay, let's go for it. <laughs> Thank you, God, for the um, thank you, God, for the beginning of the week. It's uh, holy, beautiful, and um, good. Yes. And uh, and we bless the homeless, yes. the orphan, the widows, mm -hmm. uh, the sick, and the shut in, yes. and um, and the depressed. Yes. And uh, we are looking forward to learn about creation and communication. Oh, yes. Ooh, I love it. Let's open, let's open our uh, wisdom and understanding so that we can um, learn more about this. Yes. Amen, yes. amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is such an awesome prayer. Appreciate it. All right. Who has a praise report? Anyone? Yes, Lily. Today, today we went on a hike. So Monday is like our hiking day. So mm -hmm. we went on a hike. It was kind. It was a bit difficult, but we we made it. We made it up and back. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> that increases your heart level. It increases your health level. And mm -hmm. as you hike up, you bless that place. As you hike down, you bless the place. Everyone who's behind you, the struggles going up, will have a sense of relief. Oh, that's why. That's why your journey down was easier than it going up. <laughs> mm. the, the going down was the thought that is done. I mean, you know, the hike is over. I need to get down. <laughs> what a blessing! It, but still, a blessing to get out in nature and see the beautiful scenery, environment. That's that's the real blessing to. <sighs> I know, and and then I was saying, oh, look at the uh, the vast heaven mm -hmm. and earth. Oh yeah. And then um, I don't know about him, but I tried to absorb. Oh yeah. The energy. <laughs> oh no, you did a great job doing it too. Good job. We felt you. Oh. oh anytime you anytime you set the intention on what you're wanting and what you're desiring, it says ask, and it is given to you. And it really means to ask. When you ask from that place of joy and excitement, it comes to you. Just like when you play with the clouds. You made the angels out of the clouds. Then you made the different shapes out of the clouds. Then you prayed away the rain a couple of times. Anson prayed away some, some bad weather. <laughs> Hello, Mommy Annie. God. Hello. Thank you for joining. Any praise report? Testimonies, by the way? It's a praise. I'm joining you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Woo and I got a praise report. My, well, I'll just say one of my oldest sons graduated high school today. Yay! Yay. Oh, wow. Yes. So wow. he, officially, he officially graduated. So he's done with school and his life. So now he can go to the next chapter and get a J-O-B. <laughs> <laughs> so to say he can stop paying rent, right? Oh, no. He starts paying rent right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my other praise report is I passed my violin test and I moved on. Yes. Yes. <sighs> Such a great creation. <laughs> All right. Any praise reports? None? Good, 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 good. We're on page 161. One of my favorite topics is creation and communication. When you think of communication, words are the least effective in terms of communication, but you need them to communicate with. So now what we want to do is do as Lily did today and absorb all that wonderful energy in creation and then turn it into 
communication. And we'll see, we'll show you how it works because we said in the beginning that whatever you so desire when you pray, what? Ask, believing, and you shall what? Receive them. See. So now you have to be really good at what you're asking for to get the creation that you want. So in other words, this is gonna help you get a better understanding of what creation is and what communication is. Yes. When God asked Adam in the garden, Adam, where are you? What was he asking him? Anyone? His, his thought is already hidden from God. Can't hide from God, in other words. But think about the question. Now, this is God, all-knowing God. Mm. Asking a question, Adam, where are you? So he was talking about his what? His mind. Your mind is no longer like our mind. You separated. Who told you that you were naked? In other words, who, who told you, in other words, to be fearful? Who taught you this? Right? So now there was a separation of the mind. Mm. So now we come in 2021 with a unification of the mind, the Christ mind. So page 161, first question, creation and communication are blank. Synonymous. Yes. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. She said yeah, phenomenal. <laughs> yes, all your all the questions and answers are in the text. <laughs> Plus, it's your affirmation. <laughs> she she cheated. She went to the affirmation, but that's okay. Good job. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your creations and communications are synonymous. Hmm. What does that mean? The same. Same. You want to be one with your words and what you're wanting. In other words, a simple way to put it is, what do I want and why do I want it? Remember that? Mm -hmm. What it does is gets you very clear about asking and it shall be given unto you. So now here's where step five really comes into place or the st five steps. Step one is what? ask but people have to be in the right vibration mindset christ mindset asking but here we're going to add this when you ask you have to know in your asking that it's already done does everybody get that so if we say you have 11.5 million dollars when is it no. now now Exactly. Don't put it in the future because if you put it in the future, you're going to miss it. Make sense? Mm. What do I want? Why do I want it? Now you become really good at creating and communicating with what you're wanting. Now they're one. Everything goes back to what? We're one. Adam, where are you? We used to be one. Now you split yourself from us. Question number two, God created every mind by blank, his mind to it. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> uh, can you say it by? Um, Let me say it again. Mirror, mirror, mirror his mind to it. That's a good word. We'll, we'll accept that one. That's a good word. God created every mind by what are we what is the sub here? What is the subject we're talking about? What is our subject matter? Creation and communication. So God created even God created every mind oh, by, by communicating okay. his, his mind, mind to it. Mm. Let this mind be in what? You. Mm. 
So when God created every mind by communicating his mind with it, you have God's mind. You have the mind of God. So now you can go further and say, well, greater is he who is in me than is he in the world. Now you understand why you have the God of mind. In other words, now you have loving wisdom. Now you have revelation because now you can hear the voice of the Father. Now you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Question number three. Good answer, Melissa. We like we like mirror because that mirror is a great word because if you think about it, you are created how? In the image and the mm -hmm. what? Yes. And the likeness. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we are what? Mirroring our creator. Yes. So when people see you, they're seeing who? God in the flesh. Yes. And the right. flesh became, and the word became flesh and walked amongst you. Get it? All right. Question number three. <laughs> Why did God create you? So that I can have fun. <laughs> to have fun. Yes, yes, yes. What else? <laughs> have fun and lots of fun. <laughs> Creating. And, and create. Yes, 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 yes. What else? What else? What else? Keep it going. I love it. I love it. I love it. What else? Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, and according, according to the God story. Create, God create you uh, out of love. Out of love, yes. Uh -huh. uh, according to the story, is God create uh, Adam and Eve to to uh, to dominance over all the other creation. True, but think about it. What is the what is the main thing that God wants from His creation? So that we create <laughs> to, to to create even more. What create more? The, Im the image oh, of Him. Him. What, what is our subject matter? <laughs> to, oh, communicate. To, <laughs> to communicate and create. Everybody wants something from God, but don't nobody want to talk to God. <laughs> Won't you sit down and have a little talk with God? But most people say, I have been nagging at God, and God <laughs> is not listening. listening. <laughs> because he cannot hear nagging. He only hears. Try nagging in love and see how it works. Mm. <laughs> and and you know every time I found out when I stopped my nagging, it showed up. Yep, <laughs> so I learned to after I say it and I okay, I, I place my order, I'm going away. <laughs> you know what? I'm glad you said that because when you all are praying for what you're desiring, only ask for it once. God heard you. Yeah. Everything after that, say thank you when it comes to your remembrance. Mm. So if you your first prayer is, I need a new car. After that, start saying thank you for the car. Mm. Yes. It says pray without ceasing, but what about thanks? Thanking him without ceasing. Mm. Here's why I say this. Here's why I say this. And, and you want to pray without ceasing, but here's what people do. They prayed themselves into doubt. Yes. This yeah. is why. So now we just give you say, pray for it once and say thank you every time it comes to your remembrance. Oh, I want a car. Oh, thank you for the car. And then you start telling everybody, I'm going to get a new car. Oh, what kind of car are you going to get? And then you start going through all the choices of what you're going to create out of this car. Now watch this. You ain't even got keys or title deed to the car. It was the idea, the revelation. This is what I want to create. So now I create it by communicating, this is what I want. But I'm clear about what do I want and why do I want it? Because there, there might be the old car broke down or I just like new cars. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. Question number four. Oh, did I answer the question number three? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we'll, communicate. We're, we're, we'll go back over it again. <laughs> what does what does question number four? What does creation mean? 
<laughs> what does creation mean? <clears throat> Interesting question, isn't it? What is cre what does creation mean? I'm not giving you the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> does, does, does it mean that you have communicated? You have communicated your ideas and they become the reality? Okay, yes. Think about it. I like that answer. We'll put that, we'll put that one on the shelf for a yes, thumbs up. We'll, <laughs> we'll accept that one. We'll go deeper with it. <clears throat> but think about it. When you start talking about creation, everybody's trying to create something, correct? Mm -hmm. So now, if we establish that creation and communication are synonymous, right? Mm -hmm. Then when you start looking at the word creation, then it is a absolute connection into bringing that that is unseen into the scene. There is a scripture in Hebrews that says, <clears throat> Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I'll say it again. It says now, first word is now, faith is. So now, now faith is the substance, the material thing, right? Now faith is the substance of the things that I'm hoping for that is not yet seen. Mm -hmm. You bring it into the creation. We'll get more into it, <clears throat> more to it, way more to it, because that is my favorite, because there is not one moment in your life that you're not creating. What we want you to do is be deliberate creators. Be conscious of what you're creating. I want good health. Okay, so what does good help look like? What does good help feel like? What does good help talk sound like? And then what do I need to do to move this body around to get it healthy? We have to start changing our diet. We have to start listening to the body. If I drink, if we all drink, watch this. If we all drink dairy right now, what happens to us? We have diarrhea. <laughs> all of that coming <laughs> you're gonna get gassy you're gonna get the runs it's gonna jack your stomach up mm -hmm. because for us that are on a vegetarian diet pescatarian diet that is very harsh on our body that would be like you eating meat right now it would send your body into shock mm -hmm. Literally, literally, you would have to go to the hospital because you would, if I, if they fed you a steak or beef, oh my goodness, you'd be like, I'm going to die <laughs> because you would feel it. Not only would you feel it because of the substance of it, but you would feel it energetically because of the animal of how it died. You are what you eat. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a difference in having and being? No. No? No. No difference. We're going to explain that later. Great job, Lily. <laughs> What's wrong, Sudi? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I wait for the explanation. <laughs> Remember in another lesson that we said to have and to be, they are the same. They're the same. Me and, me and my father are what? One. Okay, then. So everything about this connects you directly to God, directly to the spirit, directly to the map, connects you. Connects you to your brothers and sisters and not separate them by judging them about their behavior. But then sending them love for the good, the holy, and the beautiful. But that's who they are. Okay. Affirmation. No, we'll, we'll get to that answer. My aff affirmation, my creation and communications are synonymous. 
It is clear that while the content of any particular ego illusion does not matter, its correction is more helpful in a specific context. Ego illusions are quite specific, although the mind is naturally abstract. Part of the mind becomes concrete, however, when it splits. The concrete part believes in the ego because the ego depends on the concrete. The ego is the part of the mind that believes your existence is defined by separation. Ooh, child, look at that girl hat. Mm, I know she didn't walk out the house looking like that. Mm, mm, mm. Guilty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pastor, uh, Pastor, it is really, it's, um, it's really because I'm I'm practicing that uh, neutral, but sometimes our mind just wonder, you know, mm -hmm. and we start the judgment thing. Okay, mm -hmm. really back in, you know, <laughs> and then we we'll, then when I realize that, oh, I say, oh no 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 judgment no judgment. There you okay. go. We stop it, right? You know. Then another, another, um, then another thing, another matter come up, come up. Mm -hmm. Again, judgment. Yep. You know, yeah. it's like constantly have to be mindful about our mind. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Let me let me answer really quick. And I'm glad you stated. I caught the thought. I caught the thought. Pastor always talks about this hill, and I am so tired of hearing him talk about this car on this hill. Can we put that car to heal the rest? So, <laughs> caught the thought. That's a big point. Yeah. And it's good you it's caught good. it before it gave momentum of going further with the judgment. So, that is a great, that right there, you should count as a great blessing to have because you acknowledge, hey, wait a minute, I'm in judgment. And here's why. One, you caught it consciously because then it didn't start feeling good in your body. When you're in the, when you're tapped in, tuned in, turned into God, you're in alignment with God. So now when you get out of alignment, it doesn't feel good. When you get sad, you're out of alignment. When you start judging, you're out of alignment. When you start feeling, uh oh, wait a minute, I just, I'm starting to judge. Let me catch that thought and change the thought. Now, it, you you discipline yourself to okay it gets easier and easier and easier as I continue to catch the thought go ahead Lily um, at first um, it it is difficult because we are, we have been trained to uh, criticize or to comment on so many things right mm -hmm. but gradually one day you will become automatic when you look at anything most of the things you will think positively about that then you are good. Absolutely. One of my practices that helped me get out of judgment and continues to help me stay out of judgment is putting my face on whatever I'm judging. Yes. You will stop judging real quick. Mm -hmm. Very quickly because everybody goes, well, I would never do that. Well, put your face on it because you people would say, oh, I would never murder anybody. I am not a murderer. And this person murdered his whole family, but then in their mind, they done, ki they done slaughtered half the, half the country. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So the idea is to catch that thought. In other words, do as Melissa has practiced, because the more you practice it, the more perfect you get at it uh where did i leave off someone help me please everything the ego perceived is a separate whole mm -hmm. without the relationship that imply being the ego is thus against communication except in so far as it is utilized to establish separateness rather than to abolish it mm -hmm. the communication system of the ego is based on its own thought system as this everything else it dictates. Mm -hmm. Its communication is controlled by its needs to protect itself and it will disrupt communication when it experiences threat. This mm -hmm. disruption is a reaction to a specific person or persons. Mm -hmm. The specific, the specific, um, That's 
specificity. The specificity of the ego's thinking that results in spurious generation, which is really not abstract at all. Mm -hmm. It comes in certain specific ways to everything it perceives as related. Amen. Thank you for that. Does everyone understand that? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, no, maybe. Yes, no, maybe so. We're good. Yeah. Okay. Good. In contrast, spirit reacts in the same way to everything it knows is true and does not respond at all to anything else, nor does it make any attempt to establish what is true. It knows that what is true is everything that God created. It is in complete and direct communication with every aspect of creation because it is in complete and direct communication with its creator. This communication is the will of God. Creation and communication are synonymous. God created every mind by communicating his mind to it, thus establishing it forever as a channel for the reception of his mind and will. This is where revelation comes in when you're communicating with God. It's revealed to you. That's the revelation. Your job is to discern what has been revealed to you. Since only beings of a like order can truly communicate, his creations naturally communicate with him and like him. This communication is perfect, perfectly abstract since its quality is universal in application and not subject to any judgment, any exception, or any alteration. God created you by this and for this. God created you by this and for this. Yes. I come into this day in God, with God, for us. Now you see where we got it, right? Part of it. The mind can distort its function, but it cannot endure itself with function it was not given. In other words, did God give you fear? No. no. Who gave you fear? We'll, we'll, we'll let you, we'll let you, I'm going to let you off the hook this one time and you get to blame your parents. <laughs> but you only get to do this one time and after that you can never do it again. <laughs> My parents are here. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe a bad example, Anson. My apologies. <laughs> I'll find a better one. <laughs> All right. That is why the mind cannot totally lose the ability to communicate, even though it may refuse to utilize it on behalf of being. Existence, as well as being, rests on communication. Existence, however, is specific in how, what, and with whom communication is judged to be worthy, worth undertaking. <clears throat> Being is completely without these distinctions. It is a state in which the mind is in communication with everything that is real. What is real? You, 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 you. Your brothers and your sisters are real. Mm -hmm. The things that you have created are real. Yeah. To whatever extent you permit this state to be curtailed or curtailed, you're limiting your sense of your own reality, which becomes total only by recognizing all reality in the glorious context of its relate, real relationship to you. This is your reality. Do not desecrate it or recall from it. It is your real home, your real temple, and your real self. Mm -hmm. God, who encompasses all being, created beings, who have everything individually. That's why it's enough to go around. That's why I don't understand, or we understand, but it is illogical for people to fight over money, fight over possession when there is enough. Realistically, every person on the planet could be a billionaire. Think about that. If everybody on the planet was a billionaire, what type of planet would this be? What what else would they fight about? If everybody was a billionaire, what would they fight about? Um, nothing. 
Toilet paper. They <laughs> <laughs> don't fight. You should, there would be no reason to fight. There would be no poverty. You should have no health issues. Uh, you, you see what I'm saying? A lot of it comes from people's culture, their environment of where they're where they're at, the situation they're 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 succumbed to. Hard to tell a person who lives in a ghetto you're a millionaire when every day he has to step over a wino or run away from gangs or hide from rapists. So now he's looking at us going, y'all live in a fantasy world. You haven't walked in my shoes or been where I've been. So it's easy to say, oh yeah. So now how do we get them back to that mindset? Because they have to see it. Majority of us have been poor. Let me speak for me. I've been poor. But now, not only rich in wealth, but rich in spirit. I'd rather be rich in spirit than rich in finances. Both are good, but if you have bad health, money means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Nothing. Oh. But who won? Oh. God who encompasses all being created beings who have everything individually, but who want to share it to increase their joy, but who want to share it to what? Increase their joy. It is better to give than to what? Receive. When you give in this manner, this is increasing your joy. Mm -hmm. Nothing real can be increased except by sharing. Mm -hmm. Sharing is what? Caring. Caring. <laughs> we didn't make that up so we we can't take the copyright for that one <laughs> that is why god created you divine abstraction takes joy in sharing god shares everything with us everything jesus made a statement he says he did not think it robbery to be equal with god then he made the statement me and my father are one and then he says i'm your elder brother we're family so now we kin folk so now i gotta listen to the big brother all the big brothers there are many 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 that is what creation means creation means sharing Ooh, didn't see that one coming did you <laughs> because when you say creation People automatically think of tangible things. Mm -hmm. What about creating, sharing? What am I sharing? I'm sharing loving wisdom to the world. I'm sharing unconditional love with those that are before me. I'm sharing healing because I'm already whole. So now I can heal others because I'm whole, which makes me holy. Yeah. How what and to whom are irrelevant because real creation gives everything since it could create only like itself you create like the father creates mm -hmm. remember that the that in the kingdom there is no difference between having and being mm -hmm. the right answer yay as there is in existence in the state of being the mind gives everything always so now what does my mind have to be my mind has to be love unconditional love this is why when we started the teaching it was the 30-day love challenge Ooh, which reminds me shall we do that one again oh yes what's the day oh now now it becomes natural right yeah <laughs> let's do it anybody want to do another 30-day love challenge i say yes <laughs> <laughs> All right, mark on your calendar. Where are we at? 30 day love challenge. I still, we have never stopped. <laughs> what? I know. We never stopped? Okay, fine. I'll, you know what? Because you said that, I will accept that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, think today we, I think today we did quite good. You know, then today we have um, three, four, six strangers. Talking to us. 
They're not strangers. That's your family. You just didn't yeah, know yeah. Name. I think so too because they feel I I I I felt that they they are very nice people. So you know Absolutely. they will come down and encourage us, and then I told Sudi, I said they are the angels. Yep. Because Absolutely. we were about to give up. <laughs> <laughs> so they encouraged you, right? Yes. <laughs> and they strengthened you, didn't they? Yes. Absolutely. And then they added a little motivation onto it. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. They say, oh, it's, it's, don't give up. It's just five more minutes. You know, just round the corner and then you have the best view of your life. It's all worth it. Totally worth it. Go, go, go. Cannot make this up. What you, now, what did they do for you? They were sharing. Oh, yes. They had already been there where this was your first time, mm -hmm. they knew what lies around the corner. Mm -hmm. Keep going because it's going to be worth it. Mm -hmm. We yeah. say keep pushing at your faith because it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Keep seeking God because it's worth it. Yes. Always. Yes. Good stuff right there. <laughs> you, now watch this. Of all the places and all the time, and you had somebody that you didn't know, not one, but six people to encourage you. Mm. Yeah, six. six. Most six. people would have said, whew, I know what that feel like and just walked on by you. <laughs> <laughs> and look at the did, number. Look at the number. The number is six. Absolutely. Divine, divine, divine. <clears throat> the Bible repeatedly states that you should praise God. Hallelujah. This hardly means that you should tell him how wonderful he is. He is no ego <clears throat> with which to accept such praise and no perception with which to judge it. But unless you take part, your, take your part in the creation, his joy is not complete because yours is incomplete. Did y'all catch that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that don't connect you to God, I don't know what will. And this he does know. He knows it in his own being and its experience of his son's experience. The constant going out of his love is blocked when his channels are closed. And he is lonely when the minds he created do not communicate fully with him. He wants an intimate relationship with you. Have a conversation with him. Take him all your troubles. Make sense? Yes. Matter of fact, leave him there. <laughs> Don't go back and pick him up. <laughs> All right. God has kept your kingdom for you, but he cannot share his joy with you until you know it with your whole mind. Who is the kingdom? Say, I'm the kingdom. I am the kingdom. I'm the kingdom. I am the kingdom. There you go. Revelation is not enough. I know we've emphasized revelation is the miracle but in this context it's not enough because it is only communication from god god does not need revelation returned to him <laughs> as if it could <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that's funny <laughs> that was our joke for the day that was our joke for the day <laughs> had to sneak one in there but he does want it brought to others. Bring your revelation of what he gives you, that unconditional loving wisdom, and share it with others. Look at what the six did for them. They shared it and they brought it to others. Mm -hmm. You know why? Somebody brought it to them. Yes. This, it, that's just the way it works. That's the law of attraction. That is your reaping and sowing. You don't have to see 
them to know what happened. Mm -hmm. You just have to experience and be blessed that it happened. Why? You asked for it. Ooh, I don't know if we can make it, Sudi. Girl, I don't know if we can make it either. I'm tired. I'm tired too. <laughs> Woo! And then all of a sudden, hey, go a little further. Just, just ease around the corner. Their view is magnificent. And then they try to describe it in words, in their own words of what they experience. And then you get there and you try to match their words of what they experience to what you are seeing and go, it was worth it. Uh -huh. Tell me about the view, please. 10 out of 10. <laughs> uh, uh, we, are, we are high up. Looking mm -hmm. down into the into the into the bay into the the Gulf or something like that. So mm -hmm. there'll be mountains, there'll be waters, there'll be, there'll be islands. Uh, islands. The the sky is blue. Oh man, look at that! Did everybody picture that in their mind? <laughs> I even felt the sun. <laughs> well, faster today. I. <laughs> Today it was a good day for me. Yeah. Because it's cloudy. Yeah. Not much sun. Yeah. It's cooling. So I say, oh, how I wish every day is like this, you know? Thank you. We appreciate it. <laughs> good job. Because we'll accept that. You keep your rain to your side. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Praise God. And, and, and keep the snow at your side. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> Fair, see how we share? See, that's sharing right there. <laughs> All right. This cannot be done. This cannot be done with the actual revelation. Its content cannot be expressed because it is intensely personal to the mind that receives it. It can, however, be returned by that mind to other minds. This is why you have to be very careful of who you share your mind with. In other words, who you fellowship with. If you are not grounded and then someone is depressed and then they remind you about an incident that happened to you, then guess what happens to you? You get sucked into depression. Yep. Mm -hmm. If they start telling a sad story and you don't put a rainbow on their sad story, You'll start agreeing with them. Yeah, really? Oh, man, man. And then all of a sudden, some will come up to your mind that you can relate to, and now you will share that story with them, thinking that's helping, and now y'all swapping sad stories, and now, oh, God, everybody's crying, and ain't nobody talk to God. <laughs> and wonder why not got, nothing got done, nothing got fixed, because y'all crying, and wallowing in your your grief and sadness and God is going, okay, I'll wait for you. Okay. When y'all finish, I'll be right here. You done? No, no more. Okay. I I'm still here. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good story. <laughs> <laughs> Through the attitudes, the knowledge from the revelation brings. It can, however, be returned by the minds to others through the attitude, the knowledge from the revelation. So the attitude should be what? One of love. When they hear the truth, the truth will make them free because it will resonate in their spirit. They won't fight you. Most of the time they'll be quiet and half the mouth will be open because they'll be in awe of what you're telling them. God is praised whenever any mind learns to be wholly helpful. So when you see that stranger or that one that we would call the homeless person and the Holy Spirit gives you revelation to give them that 20 and you know that's your only meal money or your only bill money, give them the 20. You'll get 200 back. Really, Pastor? Now just don't start giving homeless people 20 without revelation. <laughs> You're going to go broke. <laughs> okay pastor the, so the revelation is the urge of giving the urge of giving right the revelation is trusting the little voice that inner voice 
that never steered you wrong. You would call it mother's intuition. Men would call it gut instinct. Some would call it psychic intuition. Some would call it empath. There's many names. But it's that voice where you learn to trust where it told you don't go right and you went right and all of a sudden you had a bad experience and you went, man, I wish I would have listened. We've all had that. No, for, for this uh, giving to the homeless, you know, sometimes, sometimes you know how you want to give, but then the traffic moves on, traffic moves, then you cannot give him the money because you're on the second lane, not the lane close to the curb. And then that's, that's, you don't want him hurt. So mm -hmm. that is out of your control. Mm. Watch this. He felt the love because you wanted to give to him. Ooh, y'all get that? Mm -hmm. He felt the love because did he meet eye contact with you? Did he see you? No. He didn't have, he didn't have to see you. He felt you. We feel one another. Yes, Sudi. Talking about the, the traffic and the people just now on our way there, at, at the big junction traffic light, uh, there was a panhandler, but he was, instead, this time he was on the second lane and I was on the turning lane, right? Mm -hmm. But but we see, uh, we see his his uh, staff on the on the middle curb, on the middle separator. So, but he was on the second lane. So Lily was already trying to say, no, roll down the window, maybe you have to call him up or whatever. But he was already past us, so I said, ah, it's easy. So I take I take a Canadian uh, uh, to this is two dollar coins. Uh -huh. So I take a few and then I throw onto his stuff, and then after that the lights turn green and we just go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you remember, Melissa? You remember? I'm gonna try to remember the story where you was coming out of a store and there was a homeless man. Oh yeah. And what told you to give that person money? What unction inspired you? What what little voice? What what motivated you? What sparked the thought? Oh, I want to give to this person. Yeah, I just want to give him. That's yeah. what but where did it come from? <laughs> where did it come? Where did it come from? Because <clears throat> you have to say it came from God. The revelation came from God. You never know when you're entertaining who? Straight angels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You never know. And it's, it's not to test you in terms of a judgment. <laughs> you know, there's one time, you know, there's one, there's one time I said I was in a car with somebody. So I give the money. Well, then that person said, why are you giving money? Oh, because he's an angel. So you have to give him money. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I was, like, hit him. I was like, I think he must be like, he didn't say anything, he was just quiet. <laughs> he must he's be like so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he's thinking, I don't even know how to respond to that. Okay. <laughs> but he didn't know what you knew. <laughs> think about it. Most people don't know why. They just go, oh well, I just had a feeling because I got a feeling. And they'll just go on that feeling. Well, identify the feeling is the is the God. It's the greater is he who is in you that is saying, hey, share with your brothers who or sisters that are in destitute, that are in need. You're you woke up in a in a soft bed, safety, had shower, shave, was able to go pee, poop, brush your teeth, wash your face go in the refrigerator and make a whole lot of choices on stuff that you know you didn't need or need to eat. <laughs> Have the luxury to turn some lights on, go in the closet, change clothes. We could go on, but you get the idea, right? So it's the, it's the, it's the voice that you've learned to trust. Keep trusting it. When your children was doing something wrong, the mothers automatically knew it. Yep. Then when Stanley was doing something wrong, Mama Melissa was on him. Stanley's Stanley's a good guy. He's he's a good he's a good young man. 
we're, we're just making a point on what mothers do. Mothers have a way of knowing certain things that, that when the children are doing things they ain't supposed to be doing. Yes or no, moms? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. The truly, oh wait, this is impossible without being wholly harmless because the two beliefs must co coexist. The truly helpful are invulnerable because they are not protecting their egos and so nothing can hurt them. Once you are unoffended by anyone or anything, once you stop judging, once you get out of fear, now you're, you're invulnerable. Nothing can hurt you. Why? You know you're eternal. You know who you are. If God be for you, who could be against you? Where is God? God is in me. Amen. Their helpfulness is their praise of God. So when you talk about praising God, this is what praising God really is. And the church might get mad, but not what they do in the church house. That's religion. Because look how many people fight over praise and worship. Some fight over when communion should be done. Some fight on when it shouldn't be done. Some fight what songs should be sung. Some fight what songs shouldn't be sung. Some fight, oh, we should bring instruments. Some fight, don't bring instruments. Some fight, let's put this name on the wall. Some fight this one on the wall. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they don't even know what praise is, let alone, let's not even talk about worship. Good Lord. <laughs> Be here all night. Yeah. their helpfulness is their praise of God and he will return their praise of him because they are like him and they can rejoice together when you want to rejoice with God hallelujah all day you can't out rejoice God I'm sorry I tried <laughs> God goes out to them and through them and there is great joy in the kingdom. Every mind that is changed adds to this joy with its individual willingness to share it, share in it. The truly helpful are God's miracle workers whom I direct until we are united in the joy of the kingdom. I will direct you to whoever, wherever you can truly be helpful and to whoever can follow my guidance through you. Questions, comments, concerns? All right. Here's, here's, what's, here's what's a blessing about what you all do and what this lesson taught. We taught on creation and communication, correct? I asked y'all a question before we got into the lesson. Does anyone remember what the question was? Not the questions in the, mm -hmm. in the lesson, but what was the question before the lesson? Anyone remember? <laughs> There's your signal right there. Uh -huh. uh, oh, one, one hour, one full hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly one hour. You all prayed, pastor, we want you to give us an hour. And I said, you want an hour, really? I can do this in 30 minutes. No, we want an hour. We got an hour. Yeah, we, we got our wish. <laughs> you got your prayer answered right on time. Can't make this up. <laughs> Thank you, God. We appreciate that. God is on God time, is he not? Whatsoever you desire when you pray, what? Believe that you shall receive it and you shall have them. Believe that. Truly, truly, truly believe that. Yeah. And don't let go of it. All right. Because we are on perfect timing, I'm going to close this out. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. adore you. We thank you for this time and this opportunity for your perfect timing, your grace, and your mercy, your unconditional loving wisdom. We thank you for your hedge protection around us. Thank you for using us for signs, wonders, and miracles, our gift and our talents, that we may go out and share unto the world those that are helpless, that we might help them become helpful. And we thank you for helping us when we can't help ourselves. We thank you for helping those that are in distute. 
Bless over those that are going through trial and tribulation that you continue to bless over them. Bless over those that are suffering that they suffer no longer. Bless over us as we lay down this evening to give us peaceful dreams and we wake up to a fresh week. Thank you for so many things. This is our prayer. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 All right, everyone. We love you all. We thank you for joining us. Have a blessed week. We will be communicating with each and every one of you in the spirit. We will see you then. Love you all. <laughs> Bye, you all. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome.